By now I'm sure that you can see that there really is no new thing under the sun. Since then, we have continued to see this same trend metastasize within America. In 2011, CNN reported that there are 48.7 million food stamp recipients in the USA. That means one out of every seven citizens of the United States of America are welfare dependents. And since September 11, 2001, we have steadily watched the increase of government authority at the expense of our civil liberties. And of December 31st, 2011, when President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act, which empowers the U.S. military to indefinitely detain U.S. citizens in military detention facilities without a trial in a court of law, we just witnessed the final death knell of our Bill of Rights. And as the civil liberties of the citizens of the United States of America are literally unraveling at the seams for five years straight, Hollywood has posted record sales at the box office. So where do we go from here? What will happen next? Well, as history thus far has proven to be a helpful guide, I perceive that on this point, it will be of great assistance as well. In the closing years of the Roman Republic, when the disparity between the rich and the poor became frighteningly apparent, sparks flew that initiated social wars, which quickly transformed into civil war. Could it be possible that this may be the ominous future that lays ahead of the so-called land of the free and the home of the brave? With the right-wing Tea Party movement numbering in the millions, the Occupy movement, growing by the second, led by no specific head, and supported by many powerful anonymous members, it is clear the poor have begun to consolidate their strength to push against the bloated 1%. But how will this all end? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of James, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall witness against you and eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped together treasures for the last days. Here, the Bible specifically pronounces judgment against the rich, those who have amassed enormous sums of wealth. We are told that their gold and their silver, which they have heaped together for their selfish benefit, would canker in the last days. However, it is scientifically impossible for gold and silver to canker or to rust, but yet the Bible says that it would happen. In other words, the Bible is here telling us of a time in which an unforeseeable financial crisis would hit the fortunes of the wealthy. A financial crisis that would be just as unforeseeable as gold or silver rusting. And the time in which this financial crisis would hit would be in the last days. And according to James chapter 5 and verse 3, while the wealthy would be experiencing this torment of the financial crisis that jeopardizes their fortunes, something else very important would take place. In James chapter 5 and verse 3, we are told, Behold, the hire or the wages of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cry it and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabahat. In other words, at the time in which this financial crisis would hit, the poor working class 
who have worked for and been defrauded by their wealthy employers would begin to protest, and their protests would be heard by the Lord of Sabahat. The word Sabahat in the original Greek means the Lord of Armies, which means that the Lord of Armies is hearing these protests from the poor and working class and his heart is being stirred by their protests. And according to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 13 through 14, the Lord of armies is the word of God, Jesus Christ himself. We are told there, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Ladies and gentlemen, these activities which are now taking place are not only sure harbingers that we are currently living in the last days, but that Jesus Christ is getting ready to adorn himself with his kingly robes of vengeance and return to planet earth to give to every man his due reward. And whether you are a part of the 99% or the 1%, we all will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For Jesus himself said in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 11, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. The only question that remains is how will you stand on that day? Will you be amongst those whom during their lifetime surrendered their hearts to Jesus Christ to be cleansed from all their sins and to be empowered by His Holy Spirit to obey all of God's commandments, including His forgotten fourth commandment, which enjoins upon all of His loving servants to remember and to be blessed by keeping his seventh day Sabbath holy, which comes on the day which we know as Saturday? Or will you be amongst those whom will be lost because you chose to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of this world rather than serving the creator of this world? The choice is yours. However, please don't be fooled when the men of this world begin to promise you peace and safety, for they did the very exact same thing in the time of the now fallen Republic of Rome. In an effort to quench the civil unrest that was threatening to destroy the Roman Empire, Emperor Constantine the Great in 321 AD passed a national Sunday law forcing all the citizens of the Roman Empire to cease from all labor on Sundays. And by the year 538, they persecuted anyone who continued to honor God's seventh day Sabbath. Constantine the Great united the powers of church and state. Now, do you think, perhaps, as a proposed solution, to the civil unrest which is currently coursing through the veins of the United States of America and the rest of the world for that matter, that when the United States of America speaks as a dragon, it will unite church and state and pass a national Sunday law as well? Well, as I've told you before, I'll tell you once again. Listen, he who doesn't remember his past is doomed to repeat it. Because, as a wise man once said, there really is no new thing under the sun.